Hey y'all, happy Friday. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I am feeling a little better, so I decided I was gonna put out a part one and a half before I do part two of the Sigma Chi frat boy videos. And I wanna say first and foremost, everything in this video is pure speculation based solely on my personal thoughts and opinions. And I'm not accusing anyone of anything. And I encourage you guys all to do your own research and form your own conclusions. So guys, it just so happens every time I'm looking into something and I don't know if it's just like an intuitive thing, um, but I always get led to the right path somehow. So when I was trying to get ready for the part two, I came across a few things that I thought I'd hop on and share and get more of your input, and then I will do part two, hopefully by Sunday. God willing, I stay feeling good until Sunday. So what you're looking at right here is the Sigma Chi initiation ritual. This is what they, I guess, have to recite when they are being initiated. I found it interesting. It's a little bit of a long, lengthy read, but you can press pause and then press play if you're interested. I personally have been thinking on this path from day one, so I find it interesting. If not, skip ahead. Sorry, guys, for those who don't like to read, because of my voice, I can't, I'm not going to read, and I'm not going to, like, baby you guys. You can read on your own. Um, but I did find this interesting, and there's a little more reading to come, but I found this as I was looking into what's coming up next which is what was posted last week on the University of Idaho Sigma Chi Instagram. And so they had announced their 2024 executive board members and each dude's picture you're about to see and they have their picture and their position or their title held. So I was like, huh, what's that mean? So I went to the website and I got the definition of each and I was a little... Well, first, Google popped up with a bunch of other stuff that made me really interested. Then I went to the website to get the proper terminology for literal Sigma Chi members. So that's what you're seeing. And again, press pause and then press play. Read at your own pace. I just found it interesting because this discusses a lot of the initiation, the ritualistic part. And this guy, Trent, is actually the guy with the chest tattoo um, that you see here. He was in the last video you know, angry dude, very angry, which I'm going to get to that point in part two. So please do hit the notification bell so you don't miss that by Sunday. And I found it just interesting that they use certain words and the terminology, but they're very careful. I also found some other stuff a little, you know, digging a little deeper from past prior Sigma Chi members, not just at University of Idaho, but from all over America. And it's just interesting. And my point of all of this is to really, I never ever understood Illuminati Freemason. Like I did not ever even think that that was all real. Now, what do we see? We see Diddy dealing with all this stuff that he's allegedly been doing for years and years. And I mean, it's like, I look back and I'm like, oh my God, my whole like end of high school, my college years were like, these people were all being so, they were being corrupted and by corrupt, awful, rich, rich, rich people, right? So just because Diddy's like a rapper, it's not just because he's some black dude, gangster rap, rich guy. It's not just these people. It's rich, elite people in America. Do you know who owns Universal Records? Some old, rich, white dude. So... This has nothing to do with color. And I personally, in my opinion, watching the last video that I shared with y'all, they kind of treated the mixed kid. I'm mixed, half black, half white, just like dude. So I'm speaking freely on this. And I've heard from other sources that they don't treat people of color very well. That's supposed to be their homie, right? But they weren't talking to him like he was a homie. They don't even talk to each other like they're homies. They're not brothers. They're not friends, if you ask me. That's my opinion. And it just made me wonder, hmm, I wonder what Ethan was doing at that time. P. 
P. Diddy's being exposed because he's done this for so long, but he's gotten away with it for so long. These kids are no different. They are getting away with unalivings, possibly, possibly, or knowing and not telling the truth about something. None of these kids, you cannot tell me that not one of them has a clue what happened. That's BS. I'm just saying. But I'd like to hear your thoughts, y'all, and I will get part two out hopefully by Sunday, and I will get back to your comments later today. Hit the like, subscribe, notification bell, and stay safe.